Carrie Rhodes here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Today's video features the Onome stamp set. It's my stamp set of the month. So every Monday I release a video featuring my stamp set of the month, which is just my pick for a stamp set that I love. Usually it's gonna have um, cute images, coordinating sentiments, and a die set that matches. So that's what the O oh Gnome stamp set has. And this time I wanted to play with a product that came out as an add-on by Lawn Fawn and that's the Mushroom House die set. So cute. So what I did is I took this die and created mini cards. So the Mushroom House opens and I just thought they were adorable. They are under four inches by four inches. If you put a chimney and some things that come out of the house, you're gonna have a little bit bigger card and need a four by four envelope, but um, just depends on how you make yours. You maybe could fit them in a three by three envelope. Also, if you watched last week's video, that was the shadow box card, this, right? Look, it folds flat. A little shadow box and you commented on that video you got a chance to win this particular card and since it's the first time I'm doing this on YouTube normally I do this on my Facebook page I am giving away three of these cards so I have the three lucky winners I'm announcing right now and they are Elaine Siever Renee Thompson and Shirley Malarkey. So if you are watching this, ladies, leave a comment below that you won. And also, if you comment on this video, you get a chance to win the card that I'm making today. And I will announce that on next Monday's video. See how that works? Yeah. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the project. Um, and then you could win today's card, just like Elaine, Shirley, and Renee did with the shadow box card. All right. So let's get to creating some mushroom house cards. All right, this is the mushroom house die set. We're using this large piece to make our cards and then I'm gonna use every single die in this set to accentuate my cute little card. So I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is three and a half inches by seven, scored at three and a half inches. You fold it in half and then you're gonna put the die on the paper so that the top of the die is off of the paper right where that crease is. So I'm not cutting the whole thing and I will leave that opening there so that we have a crease on our little mushroom card. Running that through my Putnam 6 die cut machine and you'll see how once this is die cut it will open and be a cute little card. That off and there we have it. Perfect. And now I'm going to speed this up a little bit and show you how I'm die cutting all the rest of the pieces. I have black licorice, uh, cranberry bliss, I believe, paper here. And I kind of just thought ahead of what colors I wanted all the little parts and pieces to be. I'm going to have the glow behind the window be this banana cream and the glow behind the lantern, also banana cream. I have a limeade splash for my grass and my flower stems. I have orange creamsicle for my butterfly and bubble gum for my flowers. So there I can run those through all at once. And then I'll show you how I kind of take everything apart. I really like to have um, my magnet sheet next to me. Now, Lawn Fawn's dies don't come on a magnet. I, um, I stuck that down to the packaging so that I could keep track of all those tiny little dies. I have a piece of foam here that I'm working on and using my bloom tool to release all those little middle pieces. The styrofoam block I have it was with some packaging of something that I purchased and I just kept it for this type of thing. So I'm just um, poking out the little tiny pieces and then making a pile of all of them as I go. And then that little brush end, if your parts, your die cuts have the tiny little parts that uh, need to be removed, that brush you can use to kind of rub them out. 
when it's on top of the styrofoam, they come out beautifully. But check out the tiny little dice. There's a doorknob and like a little lock for the door as well. It's so, so tiny. This little arrow looking thing is the chimney. We have two little tulips. So it cuts two tulips at one time. And of course, a little cute butterfly. So put all those pieces right back on the magnet sheet so they don't get lost for all time. I have lost one teeny tiny stamp and I'm still sad about it, but it was a heart and Lawn Fawn has a heart in practically every stamp set, so I think I'll be all right. All right, so now we can start assembling our card. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is stamp the inside. So I don't have to worry about that with all the things on the outside of the card. And I'm using um, stamps from the Onome stamp set and it says, you're a friend like gnome other. Oh no, that's not what I put on here. There's gnome one like you. That's what I did. I'm using lobster tail ink from Lawn Fawn to ink that up. So I have the red that matches the red on the outside of the card. There's gnome one like you. I did a different saying. Yeah, so there we have it on the inside with a little room to write your personalized sentiment beneath that. And then we can go ahead and glue on the roof, which this is my favorite part. It brings it to life immediately. So I love the red and white mushroom combination. So, so cute. And the holes on this roof are really placed perfectly to make these into cards because there's no hole at the very top where that fold is. So you can't see that the it's a little shorter than the roof. And then while that glue is still wet, I'm able to put some glue on the end of my chimney and just slide that between the front of the card and the mushroom roof. And I have just a piece of acetate here, window sheet, and I just cut a tiny little piece. And on one end, I'm going to put a uh, double stick tape on both sides, and then I can sandwich that between the roof and the card as well. And that is going to be where I put the cute little butterfly, like it's flying over the house. So these two elements on my card are the reason why we would need a 4x4 four four envelope for this card. And I don't happen to have any on hand, so I'm probably going to uh, make a custom envelope. Or like I said, um, this card would be really cute just tucked in a plant as a gift. That's what I think. All right, so I glued the door on, and you can see the door actually die cuts so that it opens and closes. So just be careful not to put glue behind the part that opens if you want your door to open. You can glue it flat and not have it open at all. And then you can see there's a little circle that goes behind the window so you can make the window have a glow to it. So I'm gonna put on my door pieces now, and you can see they're so tiny. I'm using my jewel picker to stick them down and that just makes it a little bit easier. The part that I'm gluing now is like the part that you would put a key in. So it has a opening in the center of it. So it's a little tricky to get glue on it. And then um, the grass die, die cuts a longer piece of grass and a shorter piece of grass. So since I put my door off to the side, I can put the longer piece on one end and the shorter piece on the other end, being sure not to cover up the part of the door that opens when I glue that down. And I really feel like liquid glue is the best adhesive for all these tiny little things. And now I'm gonna glue down the stems for the flowers, just tucking them into the grass there. I'm gonna do two flowers. The stem die cuts out a large and a small stem. That's great, you can cut two at once. And then the flowers, die cut two at once as well. So we can have both flowers done with one pass of the die. I did these in bubble gum, little pink tulips. And then this is the little garden hook and there's a lantern. And I'm gonna glue this down actually, um, there's kind of a front side to a die cut and the back side to a die cut. I turned it over and I have the back side up because I wanted my hook going the other way for this card. And then there's the lantern and there's also a piece that goes behind the lantern to make it look like it's glowing as well. So this is gonna hang off my card a tiny bit, 
but um, I feel like it is secure enough being glued halfway onto the house. Well, there we have it. And see the door opens. Now we need a little gnome for inside. So I'm going to do the little girl and I'm going to stamp that using my Misty on some Canson watercolor paper. And I will ink that up with clear pigment ink so I can emboss it, which means I need to rub my paper with an anti-static tool so that the powder only sticks to the ink and not all over the paper. So I like to ink that up two times because it's clear ink on white paper, it's hard to see. So it just ensures that I do have a good impression. Sprinkle on some black embossing powder and then I will heat set that with my heat tool after removing any stray bits I might find of embossing powder. That piercing end on my bloom tool works great for that. So heat up your tool really well before you emboss and then you can take that to your paper. Well, I found another little speck on her cheek I had to get rid of. Take that to your paper and melt the powder. And it just works better when your gun's already hot. Otherwise, you risk blowing off some of the powder that you want to keep. All right, so these are the Tombow, no, the Zig, sorry, Clean Color Real Brush Markers that I'll be using to color her in. And I do have the colors up on the screen, the number as well as the name. So this one is yellow and I'm going to outline the little apron and then I'm using the blender pen that uh, Zig released recently to blend that out so this is just really simple coloring if you're new to Zig markers this is one of the best ways to color with them is by using a embossed image either on Bristol smooth cardstock or watercolor cardstock and then you kind of outline your area and then you go over that with either a lighter zig marker or with the zig blender you can see the blender there is number 999 i will have all the products i used linked for you in the description box below this video as well as on my blog post then for the hat, I'm going to use just one marker. Now, if you watched last week's video using this set, I used multiple markers for my blending. And so this is just a, a more simple way to do it, especially if you find coloring is not your strong suit. This is a really easy way to do it. And these markers are so fine tipped that you can get in and color these teeny tiny lawn fawn images. So I'm doing some mid brown for her hair and her shoes and then using that blender to blend it out. And I know I'm gonna die cut her, so I just clean the end of my blender off on the same piece of paper before switching to a new color. Now for the skin, I'm not gonna do any blending. I'm gonna color her skin pale pink, and then I'll just add a little bit of cheek to, to the top with the blush marker. So that gives it the kind of multi-toned look. I had a little uh, brown go outside of her hair, so I just swiped that away with my blender. And then I'll bring in the coordinating die and we'll die cut her out so that she's ready to go on the card. So cute. So we'll just glue her right in there like she's kind of peeking through the window. And that will finish up the white card. And then I thought I can't just make red and white mushrooms, so I challenged myself to do another mushroom card. So let me show you that one. All right, so I've die cut all the pieces for my brown card. I have the light and dark brown kind of combination here, and I'm using the same sentiment on the inside, and that will show up really nicely on this light colored oatmeal cookie cardstock. And then this brown is hazelnut blend. <clears throat> and I'm just putting it together the exact same way. So I have sped this up a little bit because um, you saw me glue everything together before. But I am going to put things on in a little bit different configuration than with the white card. So we still have the chimney. Um, but I'm going to do something different for the butterfly. You'll see I kind of decide I wasn't going to do a butterfly. And then I kind of decided, yeah, I want to do it. So you'll see where I put that. So now I'm just coloring in the little um, holes in the mushroom to, I just felt like they needed to 
stand out a little bit. So I have my warm gray number two marker that I'm using to just add some color to those little spots. And um, I actually went over them twice to really kind of intensify that. And then the door, again, I'm gonna have it open. So I'm only gonna put glue on that outer edge. And I'm gonna put this one in the center. Well, I really thought it was centered, but when I went to put my windows on, you'll see one side has a little more room than the other. So this time I thought I would try gluing my flower stems down and then my grass. Like, you would think I was smart enough to figure that out the first time. But, you know, when you're making your first one, you're kind of just figuring out what you want. And then when you make the second one, you're like, okay, this is going to be easier if I do that. So it's always good to make a couple versions of the same card. And then you can add those little tweaks and, you know, then you're smarter by the time you make the second card. So... I put my uh, grass on. You can see I've die cut the stems two times, so I have two large and two small stems, and I die cut the grass die twice as well, so I had two small pieces of grass because I have my door centered this time. Again, I'm going to flip this over and just trim off the little corners of the grass that hang off the edge. And then I can put on my flowers, so I have two pink flowers and two red flowers. I thought that would look really nice for a little variation. And I think these flowers are adorable. Really cute. Add a lot to the little house. All right, so then we're going to come in with the windows. So this house will have two windows, one on each side of the door. And uh, I cut the windows with the same brown, that hazelnut blend. So it will match the door and It'll be, I like matchy matchy. So yeah, we're gonna do the same banana cream behind there to give that little warm glow to the windows. And then I'll go ahead and glue those down. You can see the left side is a little more snug than the right, but it all works out. Like when you're building a house out of a mushroom, wouldn't it be hard to get your door centered anyway? Yeah, I think so. All right, so here's where I was like, I wanna put a butterfly on. So I got a little, sidetracked and I thought I'd lay it on there and it looked good so I went ahead and die cut one from orange and I just laid it on there to kind of see if that was for sure what I wanted to do while well, I added my doorknob and my little lock to my door. All right so then I decided I would go ahead and put the butterfly on but it needed to be popped up so I'm going to cut a little piece of a foam square that will fit right on the back of this and then it can have a little bit of dimension and just flying across there. And we need a little gnome for the inside of our house. So this time I'm gonna stamp the uh, standing up gnome. There's also one that is sitting down. So I'm gonna do the standing up one because I thought it'd be weird to open the door and the gnome would be sitting. So again, I'm going to um, stamp that with clear pigment ink and emboss it with black powder and we'll do some coloring. I'm going to use pretty much the same colors that I used before. I am going to introduce one new color and then I ended up not using yellow at all for this guy. So we've got brown for his pants and his belt. That's mid brown. I didn't put the uh, markers up on the screen again but um, it's like I said the same colors I used for the girl gnome doing his shirt with red in the same fashion of outlining it and then using the blending pen to spread it out. If you um, have the zig markers and just haven't loved how the results turn out for you, watercolor paper or Bristol smooth paper is the way to go. And using the blender might be just the thing that you need. I did find right here doing his hat that I really had to blend out um, this more than I had to blend out the other markers. Like I just had to keep going over it so I didn't have a hard marker line. And then once I did that, I thought, oh my gosh, the result was amazing. So here I'm just adding his little cheeks and then I'm gonna use the warm brown that I used on the Mushroom House uh, roof for his beard. So I added just a little and then I blended it. And then you'll see in a minute, I go back and add a little bit more because I, I just can barely see it. 
and I wanted it to be a little bit darker. So here's the new marker that I added in for this gnome. It's just marker number 90. It's a gray. So he had gray boots and a gray belt buckle. So here I am darkening up his beard a little bit. And so I just added a second layer. It needed to be a little bit darker. So there we go. I'm going to die cut him out and he's ready to go in his little house. He's so cute. So we'll do the same thing we did before and just glue him right in. So as I said at the beginning of this video, you can win this card. Um, I'm going to give away the white card and I would love it if you would like this video and leave a comment below and you'll be entered to win this card. I will announce the winner next week when I do my brand new stamp set of the month for the month of May. So make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of these cards. I thought I would just finish them off with a little bit of journey glaze, adding some shine to certain elements. Um, I'm putting it on the roof here. I added it to the butterfly and then the windows and the glass on the lantern. So it would have that look of actual glass and that shine. And that finishes off the cards. They're just adorable. They're pretty easy to make too. Just some die cutting, gluing, and there you have it. They're all done. Thank you so much for stopping by, for stamping with me, letting me share what I love with you. And if you are new here, I would love it if you would subscribe and you can catch my videos every week here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much and happy stamping. Bye.